Okay, welcome to Pearl Quiz 3. So this, this is going to be awesome. Oh, the buzzer's not working. There we go. Okay. This was uh, fun in the last few years we've done this. So everybody gets to win a prize. So the <laughs> this is my wife, Laura. Um, and uh, I, I work for ZipRecruiter, hence the ZipRecruiter t-shirts. Or these are actually Zip Games t-shirts where we had a big company party last week and played lots of games. So the, the point of this quiz is, is to learn. Ultimately, we want to learn. We also want to measure our knowledge. How much of the obscure things of Pearl do we know or do we even care? But hey, it's fun. So the, the main thing is to have fun. Now the questions themselves, some are going to be simple and really easy, for, even for a beginner. Some questions will be tricky, so we might be trying to fool you. And uh, <clears throat> some questions will be things you will never, ever run into, so you'll never have to worry about. Unless we state otherwise, this has, the, the, all the questions are related to a recent version of Perl. And by recent, I don't mean 526 or 528 necessarily. So things might change in some of those. So think probably like 518, 522, somewhere in that range. But most of them, it won't matter which version of Perl, they'll be, all be consistent. The question types will vary. There will be multiple choice. There will be fill in. You'll need to come up with an answer off the top of your head. And you don't need to worry about whether or not you know the answers to most of the questions. It's OK. And if you answer a question, you get a prize. If you don't answer, even if you answer, if you don't answer at all, you don't get a prize. But if you answer right or wrong, you get a prize. So you can write down the answers on your paper, a tablet, laptop, whatever you want. If you don't care, you don't have to write down the, the answers at all. And I ask that you please be respectful and not shout out answers. Don't even talk with your neighbor about the answer. So we don't end up with somebody giving, giving somebody inadvertently the wrong answer or, or the right answer. OK. Is it already on? Yes. OK. Does that mean we need paper? You don't need paper, but you can use paper. A little bit much. OK. So this means I can take this one away. Cool. <clears throat> so I can wave my hands more. OK. So what we will do is uh, we will present the question. And, and s some of them are kind of lengthy, and you have to think about a bit. Um, so we'll pause. And then if you want to record an answer, or just think about it. And then we will select somebody to give their answer. And generally, the way I do this is I just go around the room in order. So I'll clear out one table after another as we're doing the answers. So the, that person will give their answer that I, that I pick. And so you can kind of get an idea of when you're going to get picked, because we're just going to go through the tables. Um, only one person will be selected for each question. And then we'll reveal the answer when, after the person's given their answer. And then we'll talk about it. It's because there's some that there's some interesting points that we need to, to, to know and share about. And others, eh, it's easy. We don't need to talk about it. Some are kind of silly. And then we will award a fabulous prize. Yeah. So get ready to record your answers. Let's begin. So number one, somebody says use strict is broken because they did a, an assignment to dollar A and then decided to say use strict afterward and it didn't complain. So there's a Perl function that is actually responsible for this. Now we're going to do is pick somebody. Okay, so we'll start at this table here then. So, 
So, so your answer is? Sort. Sort. So now I see I have to head over to the game show console and hit either red or... That is correct. The answer is sort. So now we get to give you a prize. Now, we have here prizes. You can, some you can choose from, some you can't. Some I will award you anyway. So we have, um, these are metal water bottles that are insulated. Awesome. We have uh, batteries for your phone. We have Bluetooth speakers. We have coffee mugs. I'll, I'll take a Bluetooth speaker. Bluetooth speaker. That's fancy. Okay. Award the, the winner a Bluetooth speaker. Yes. Woo. Okay. Question two. This selfish sounding keyword didn't exist before Perl 5. It's faster and safer way to declare variables than local. Okay, back to this table, rotating counterclockwise. Hour. It is my. So, you just won a three disc deluxe edition set of Twilight on DVD. All the discs are there. I can't guarantee that with everything else. Okay, last person at that table. So look at this code. So we're creating a hash, and we print the length of the hash. What is the answer? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or H? I did. Oh, well, I didn't. I didn't tell you the right answer. It was my. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah, we did. Okay. Okay. Could I have the last question? Could you have the last question? No, I think what you meant to say is, can I repeat the question? And the uh, answer is no. Um, now, you can guess, and you will still get a prize if, it's, if you get it wrong. If you get it right, you, well, we may get to the point where you, you get what prizes are left. So. Uh, I'll go with that G. G, 62. <laughs> this is actually a tricky one because it depends which version of Perl you're running. Length expects a scalar, and when you, when you used to put a scalar in, in list context, or in array context, what it would do, or sorry, in scalar context, it would return a, the fullness of its buckets, and you end up with a string that looked like 20 s divided by 32, and you go, huh? Yeah, and Larry agrees it's not very useful. So in, in uh, more recent releases, it actually gives you a more meaningful number, like two. <clears throat> okay. okay. Do you, does he get a pick? Um, yeah, he, no, no, he gets, he gets, um, Let's, let's give him this one. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? <laughs> a great game. Okay. Um, let's go with the table behind here. Theron, you're up. What Perl command line option tells you where Perl modules are installed? Command line Perl. I'm saying it's not Perl, not Perl doc. You're in there, yeah, Perl. No, there, there's, you have, because it, it's dependent on the system. So it's, there's, a, there's a command line switch that will tell you where your Perl modules well, that's are installed. If you have Perl doc, then it's type in N. But if, it's, if, it, if, you, if the command is Perl itself, then so it's capital D. So it's capital? Capital D. Okay, so which letter is that? No, I've got the letters up here. <laughs> which, which answer is it? A, B, C, or D? B. B as in David. No, B as in David. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Correct. Okay, choose. What would you like? You want one of those, you want one of those fancy coffee mugs from ZipRecruiter? 
get those anytime I want. I work for ZipRecruiter. <laughs> <laughs> you might want a game or something. Actually, I've got that game, so thanks. I'll, I'll stick with this. <clears throat> okay, great. Okay, now we get bonus prize time. <clears throat> yeah, I love those. Okay, next we're going around the table. So, Graham, you're up. After execution of this Perl statement, what are the values of X and Y, assuming that they were undefined beforehand and we're not using strict? It should just doesn't make any difference whether you're using strict on this. Uh, I'm going to go with X is undef, but Y is 7. <gasps> <laughs> you can put a ternary on the left side. And so what it's doing is it's deciding which variable to assign 7 to. So X is 7 and Y is undef. I don't know why anyone would use it this way, but you can. You can. Okay. So we need a prize for him. Um, let's see. Handpicked prizes. Like. <clears throat> yes, yes. By Mr. Pinball. So we have, since this was the bonus prize, you get to pick any of the prizes. So this is actually like the, twi the complete Twilight Zone fifth season on DVD. And you had thermoses, batteries, uh -huh. plugs, then I'd like a battery. Okay, great. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. If, if it's a bonus prize, if it's oh, a bonus yeah. round, there's every fifth one is a bonus prize. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, Deidre, you're up. What is the name of that single character that we put in front of Perl variables? There's a term that we use for that. <laughs> We're coming around to Gloria later. We'll give her. We'll make sure she gets a hard one. Actually, I could ask her the one I asked her last year. You don't know? The answer is or just guess. Did you say sigil? Yes. That is correct. Sigil. It's kind of a fun one. Okay. What would you like to 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 win? Water bottle. Very good. Okay, uh, we have no tables behind that one, so we're going to start here. So, <clears throat> number seven, which is the following is not true? I'm going to go with D. D is in Baker. D as in Baker. You mean D as in David. Yes, <laughs> D. D as in David. That is correct. The, the trick here is that the operator controls how the context for, for the, con the comparisons. And so. Uh, when you have the symbolic things like the greater than symbol and so on, it compares numerically. But when you have the two letters like the GT, that's the string greater than comparator. And so it converts those to strings, and so it's comparing the one character versus a seven character. So that would be false. Okay. Um, yeah, we're assuming that the, the uh, bare words are being handled properly here. Okay, next table back. 
Question eight, how would I swap the values of two variables, M and N, without using a temporary variable? And we're going to go with the... B? Okay. B is correct. Good job. I'll, she'll run stuff out to you if you just can shout out what you want, or yeah, if you want to go close. Yeah. Some great board games here. One of the batteries. Yeah, that's a cell phone. You can charge your cell phone with that. Okay, moving along here. Okay, the other person at this, that table. Number nine, which is a valid statement to give to the Perl preprocessor. D. D is in Dana. D is in Dana. I've, I've heard that word before. So that is correct. All right. It's bonus time again. Okay, so we're going to the table behind that one. Over here in the maroon shirt, you're first. I don't think you're eligible. <laughs> okay. Imagine a boggle game where all the cubes only have Perl regular expression <laughs> modifier flags on them. I think I've played a boggle game that's like this. Which one of the following words cannot be spelled? What's boggle? Boggle. Boggle is a game where you have cubes that have letters on them, and they fall into a five by five grid, and then you can only do adjacent letters and make up words. And it's it's a it's a word game. So which one cannot be spelled? You're guessing B, prairie. Okay. Turns out the answer is botch botulism. There is no B modifier. And it turns out that the uh, regular expression flags that are available, uh, we have a list of them there, and there's some new ones that started with 514 and went 522. N is new with 522. And uh, I actually had an experience working for a company where somebody used one of the newer flags not realizing that our production servers didn't have that version of Perl on them and it actually caused a minor problem. Which flag? You know, I am not sure at that time. It seems to me it was R and we were using a really old version of Perl but I, I'm not sure that that's the one that it actually was in that case. So a question over here or comment. Ah, good point. Good point. R is it's recent. It's really different. I mean, your R is came after. So R is R is it? Oh, yeah. Depends on the record. So. No, 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 no. Well, if you want to hand out Smarties to the people that that have good comments. Well, you, can't, you, you can also do double X, you can do double E, so that sort of thing. Not anymore, they don't like double X anymore. Uh, it depends on the, the version that you're doing. Double now, you can have this, one of the best Star Trek movies, or you can have Twilight Zone, or you can have a board game. Can it be a board game? Sure. You might be a redneck. That's just fun to read the cards. <laughs> And the funny thing is, is how many actually apply. Malarkey. Malarkey is a fun game. Okay, great. Okay, uh, purple shirt at that table, you're up. Number 11, what is the maximum size of a scalar value? I 
I can't hear you. B as in boy. B as in boy, 120 megabytes, huh? <laughs> it's as big as your memory allows. So, um, we need to give her a prize. What would you like? Wally puzzle, Twilight Zone. Now, I should point out, this is a used Wally puzzle. <laughs> but I counted the pieces, they're all there. <laughs> hmm. But the Twilight Star Zone, Trek. episode for complete season five, has Nightmare at 20,000 feet, has all these great episodes, but it's missing disc four. Um, can, I, <laughs> can I have the cup? Sure. Is that okay? Sure, yeah. Cool. You can take one in the wrapping if you want, or you can... Thanks. Okay. Great. Okay, uh, we're going to the table behind that one. The guy in the blue shirt. Number 12, why is it frowned upon to use grep in a void context? You're going with D? Yes. D is in David. Okay. The answer is that is B because it creates a list which is not used. Now this is actually interesting because map used to have the same problem. Uh, if you use it in a void context, it would actually be kind of slow because it's creating this this list that ends up being thrown away, but it's now smart enough that it, uh, in fact, it's been quite a while since 581, um, that it recognizes that and it doesn't generate the list. Okay. Um, do you want to call out a prize or you want to come up and pick one? Okay, while he's coming up, we're going to go to the, the lady at the table there. Number 13. Okay, number 13, we, we have some auto increment going on here. And what gets printed? That's actually a good one. Like uh, D, like David? D is in David, which, the, which is... Oh, no. B as in boy. B as in baker. So, so you're saying a one gets printed. Okay. Nice guess. But it is B. It, <laughs> well, it turns out that, that unlike um, integers, strings are handled differently and they are incremented as just following the character. So you go A to Z and it goes back, wraps around to A again. So A would be incremented to B. Okay. Uh, would you like us to bring back a prize to you? You want to come up and select one? Okay. Okay, back at the front table here. And yeah, the, the guy closest to me in the black shirt. Okay, so this is similar to the previous one, but it's a little bit different. What's the answer this time? One, so the answer is B. Okay, that is correct. What would you like? Okay. So let's, while he's selecting, let's go on to the uh, bonus prize. <clears throat> okay, guy in, the, the other guy in the black shirt at the table. What is the equivalent to use foo?
you know, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of calls import method on the string foo, which that might not do sometimes, but usually it does. Okay. The answer is correct. Okay. This guy, this guy knows way too much about Perl. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, Glory, we're coming to you. I'm giving you a coding question here, Gloria. How would you create an array of arrays? With C? Yes. You are correct. You actually cannot create an array of arrays, but you create instead an array of array references. Wow. Like I said, I know this because I remember the big discussion about it. Good for you. Okay, we'll go to the next table back. The guy in the kind of blue and white, almost looks Hawaiian shirt there. <clears throat> How would you get a reference to a list? A? A is interesting. A is very interesting, but it is wrong. There's some, actually, there's some very interesting stuff with this, because if you do this, it actually get, creates a reference to just the, st the string C. And if you put the square brackets, it just creates a reference to an anonymous array. We're used to that, that syntax. But then, we, in, in Perl, we kind of treat arrays and lists interchangeable, interchangeably, but there are a few cases in which they are not, and this is one of those. So if we really need a reference to a list, what we do is we turn it into an array and then take the reference to the array. Okay, so prize. Okay, so we'll go, while he's selecting his prize, we'll go to the next question, number 18. So the next guy at that table, gentleman with the mustache, how would I round a number to two decimal places using only built-in functions? I'll go with B, bravo. B, bravo? That is correct. And my thing jumped here. <laughs> SPRINTF actually does round. It may not round in all cases the way you wanted it to. Yeah, so yeah, you can thank binary arithmetic for that. And so yeah, there's some problems there. But generally, it'll, it'll, it'll do what you want. Okay, we're going to the next table behind that. Monsieur avec le, le chemise, uh, I don't know, what's brown? I can't remember what brown is in French, but anyway. Brun. Brun. Oui. And please don't give your answer in French, we won't understand. Okay, number 19. Ooh, cheated here. We're going to have to skip that one, it jumped. So. Um, so we'll explain this one because it, it, it revealed the answer. But anyway, so if you wanted to do a, take a string and reverse it, you need to do it in scalar context. So if you want oof instead of foo, you have to make sure it's in scalar context. Okay. So you got to the bonus prize here. Oh. <laughs> 
That is one of my most favorite videos. <laughs> You think about the poor, the poor guy in the car, you know, what's he going to do? <laughs> so, and didn't see, didn't see that coming. Okay, number 20. We have a subroutine, sub Y, print hello world, and you try to make a call to it, and it doesn't work. It doesn't call it. Why doesn't it call it? I'm not calling on you. Not yet. Not or you either. Come on. A, B, C, or D. So I need to play the, the Jeopardy theme. Hmm? No, because the last one was was revealed, and so it was it accidentally revealed. Okay, ready? No, uh, no clue. Okay, so uh, use your random number generator or random character generator to generate a list uh, of four and pick A, B, C, or D. A. The answer is D. Y is the translation operator. So that's a syntax and error because you only have the first set. You, if you added another pair of parens, it would compile, but it wouldn't be very useful. Yeah. So let's. So. so it, you, you try to call it, and, it, and it'll call the translation operator. It won't see it. So, and we'll, we'll show you how to fix that. Okay, so you need to come up and get your prize. I have a five pack of movie cards for Twilight. <laughs> if you would like that. Okay, no problem. Okay, next question. So we'll go to the guy in the teal shirt. Okay, so how do we fix Y? How do we actually call Y? So we created the subroutine Y and we want to call it and we're doing a regular just say Y in parentheses, it doesn't work. How do we actually call it? A is correct. We use the ampersand sigil, so it recognizes that as a subroutine instead of a function call. And then you'll see it. Or we could just rename the subroutine. That semicolon after the on that line that declared sub y is useless. Does it not create a problem? Uh, you're talking about the previous uh, number 20? Yeah, yeah, if you go to that final semicolon. On the subline. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense there. Doesn't hurt. Yeah, it's it's harmless. You might be a redneck if you go to a wedding and hope to get lucky. Yeah. <laughs> you need that, Carl. Yeah, this is a fun game. Oh, it, yeah. If I mean, I probably know most of these. <laughs> you might um, be a redneck if so the blue book value of your car depends on how much gas is in it. <laughs> There's the way that the, the, the cards on that game are interesting because they what they did is they took Jeff Foxworthy's quotes, for his redneck jokes, and put it on the card, and then they made up two more answers for for part of the the, the statement, and then you're supposed to guess which one is the right one. It's pretty funny. No, I'm gonna take the, the take the Bluetooth speaker. I know too much about rednecks. So. One, one prize, one what prize. Is That's a, just a battery. It's a what? It's a battery right battery. there. Oh, interesting. Okay. So if we go fast enough, see, we get to go another round again. So, 
Okay, next one at the table here. Okay, we'll go to question 22. You have a function reference, dollar funk, and you call it as dollar ampersand dollar funk or funk arrow. Is there a difference between the two calls? Which one? B. B. That is correct. Hey, come get your prize. Come get your prize. <laughs> I had no idea. Did you actually mean function reference? Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, on, on which one? What are you talking about? The function reference, dollar funk. So dollar funk would be a reference to a, a subroutine. Yeah, the real function, no. It's actually a subroutine. <clears throat> okay, now the table behind that, the, uh, the guy in the purple shirt or the white hat, you're up. Number 23, how would you use a module without doing an import? C. C, Charlie? Okay, that is correct. You just give it an empty list, and so it'll skip the import. Okay, we're going to, while he's coming up and selecting a prize, we're going to go to the, the last one here. <clears throat> Number 24, there's a direct object syntax and an indirect syntax. What is not a difference between the two? Two speakers are gone. There's no more in the box. Okay. So, what is the not a difference between the two? Um. Yeah, it would be the method name. Okay, I'll say Baker. You so B Baker? Yeah. The answer is D. Either syntax allows arguments. Would you like the prize? Okay, come on up and and, and uh, select a prize. <clears throat> okay. So we've gone all the way around. Everybody's participated, unless somebody snuck in somewhere. Okay, so we're going to start back again here. So, bonus prize time. He's supposed to get like the from the get it wrong prizes, or does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. He can pick whatever he likes. When we run out of stuff, we run out of stuff. It's a real Wally puzzle. Okay, how do you st start up the Perl debugger without a file to debug? It's almost like a Perl shell. Perl dash D. So close, so close. You need to have the minus E in there, and you can combine them so it's a minus D E, and then you need to give it a, a, a script, a string essentially to evaluate, and if you just give it a zero, it starts up and does nothing. That is a program to debug. It just returns really quickly. Yeah. So that, that'll give you an interactive shell, essentially, to, to play with Perl. So that's kind of fun. OK, come up and, and select a prize. OK, next one. OK, we've got about nine minutes left. List two common ways to access without modifying the last element of an array. Meaning you can't pop. No popping. So how would you do that? By how would you index into the last element of the array? There's there's two ways to do that. Okay. 
So some, a lot of people programmed in Perl for a long time and didn't realize you could do a minus one, and that'll give you the last element. Minus two gives you the second to last element, and so on. And then, of course, there's a dollar pound variable for each array that's automatically created whenever you create an array. So you say dollar pound the name of the array, and that'll give you the index to the last element of the array. You can also put an array in scalar context, and it'll evaluate to the number of elements of the array, which is one more than the index to the last element. So then you just have to subtract one from that to be able to use it. Come on up and select a prize. Okay, number 27, in a regular expression, you can, only, you can use curly braces to specify how many times you want to match something. For example, we're doing X, we want it to appear five to 10 times. What's the maximum number of occurrences you can match with this technique? Uh, D. Um, C, Charlie, David? D is in David. D is in David. That is correct. Okay, over here, a gentleman in the blue shirt, Theron. <clears throat> so we create a subroutine that just isn't. How can we have something named isn't? Yeah, C is in Charlie. C is in Charlie. That is correct. It's a dated construct. It's instead of a double colon. I'm flying to Europe on limited luggage, so I'll forego the price. You have to go back to England. Oh, I can go back to Jersey. Not part oh, that's right. You go back to Jersey, off the coast of Normandy. Cool. Okay. Our Canadian here. What scalar contains the name of your operating system? C is in Charlie. C is in Charlie, that is correct. Okay, Deidre, you're up. Bonus prize time. Thank you. No video, just a still. You know what's coming. Okay, the only Perl program known to be tattooed on a forearm, this cryptographic scheme was invented in 77 by three MIT graduate students, Ron, Addy, and Len. Now, I don't know who had this tattooed on their forearm, might be somebody here. So what is the name of this cryptographic scheme? RSA. RSA is correct. We gave you a clue because we gave, I read the first names, and it's their last names, the initials to their last names. So, cool. Oh, you already knew. Good. Okay, uh, next we're going to the front table here. And we've got five minutes left. Okay, dollar underscore has two characters, at argv has five. This symbol is the only single character variable in Perl. It's a special file handle used to speed up calls to stat lstat or any of the file tests. What is that variable? If you've done file IO, you've run into, the, if you've done enough of the um, file handling type stuff, you've run into this. If you haven't, it'd be a guess. Which letter? Uh, delta. Delta D. You think it's a colon. Nice try. It is underscore. Yeah. That's Good guess. Yeah. It's, 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 it's actually a file handle. Um, we, need to, we need to throw a prize at him or something. I don't know. Battle of the sections. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you don't spend enough time with the opposite sections, spend all the, the, the basement in your <clears throat> spend all your time in your mom's basement, then you probably need the Battle of Sexes game to learn about 
the world. Okay, there we go. A mug. Okay, next one. Hex function converts a hexadecimal number to a decimal. What function would you use to convert back to hex? B, pack. Actually, you use sprintf. I should have clarified this back to a hex string. OK, come up and pick a prize. OK, next one. A pragma is like a module. You invoke it with use, but it affects how Perl interprets your program. Which pragma is most likely to speed up the typical Perl program? Use less time. Use faster. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is actually a tough one. The answer is integer. Come up and pick a prize. It just, it just might not produce the correct answers. We have to unload these prizes, so. One more questions then. Uh, yeah, are we done? No, we're not done. <clears throat> okay, next table. Over here, um, definitions of croak and confess are found in which module? Carp. 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 That is correct. Okay, come up and pick a prize. Okay, the lady in the purple shirt. <laughs> Sorry, I busted out laughing when I first, I first saw this. This is great. Okay. Here's the, the question. Sarah Ophelia Cannon's hat resides at a National Museum of History. The hat with a price tag still attached symbolizes Cannon's character at the Grand Old Opry, which her character's name is a homophone, homophone with the little program that Pearl uses to build itself. If you knew her name or you knew the, 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 the Perl program, you would, they're the same. So. It has to do with a hat with a price tag on it. The answer is mini Perl. Mini Pearl, come up and get a prize. Uh, I passed the prize. Oh, we have to give her a prize then. Oh, she does. Phone um, there's phone batteries left, yeah. Okay, next table. Um, we've got um, we've got like 15 seconds, so I guess we're going to stop here, and we're going to jump down to the end. So put down your pencil. Let's see. Here we go. There you go. Put down your pencil. Remove your helmet. Tally your score. And if you are, um, if you score like this, 90%, you're a genius. But my high school physics class was so hard, they had to score it a little differently. They had to score it like this. Yeah. And here's where we actually got a lot of the questions. Those, I don't think any of those still exist, any of those URLs. So. Can you write that? Decrease the font? Yeah, I kind of, the problem is this thing has like 188 slides. So I don't think I can get it to pop up with just that one. It likes to start over. Yeah, let's see if I can get it to go. So we're actually out of time. So thank you very much. Enjoy your prizes.